Welcome back. Next, let's take a look at some of our key joins in Q. Um, there are a number of different joins and we're going to be just looking at some of the most commonly used ones in these videos, but you have links here to all the other types of joins. So definitely go check those out as well. So starting with the most commonly used join, that is the left join. So this will be very similar in nature to the normal SQL left join, where basically the result from the left join will be your entire left hand side table with your additional supplementary data added in from the right hand side. So the syntax is you have a table on the left and then LJ is the, the keyword and then you've got the table on the right. And your resulting data set will be the same row count as your left hand side table. And um, so it's always a good rule of thumb um, to make your left hand side table the table you want to keep most of the data from. You want that as your main table and then if you want to add in supplementary data that's where you should put that on the right hand side okay so let's look at this in an example so we've got one table trade and um, we've got an unkey table here and this is going to be our left hand side so we want to add in some supplementary data to this and we want to join it on the column sim so we're going to create a second table called reference we're going to key that on sim so in a left join we must have a right hand side table keyed you won't be able to perform it if you're right hand side table is not keyed um, and then I've got two new columns that aren't in my left hand side table so I've got company name and I've got sector and I want to join in these two um, columns wherever my keys match in both tables so of course sim must be in both the tables whatever the right hand side table is keyed by that must also exist in the left hand side table so that you actually have something to join on so once we have our right hand side keyed we can simply just run trade LJ reference and we see we get our left join happening so as I said above the row count is the same as your left hand side table so you get your main chunk of data is from that and then all we're doing is adding in the supplementary data wherever we have a match so JP Morgan exists in both so we get the company name and the sector for here and we get it again down here for JP Morgan and then we see for IBM we get that result back and notice Goldman Sachs um, is not in the left hand side table so we don't get a record for it so we'll only get um, data from the right hand side table where there is a key match in the left hand side as well so these are all just thrown away basically um, okay you can see here our left hand side table was unkeyed and then the result from the left join is unkeyed um, and that's a feature of the left join as well depending on whether your left hand side table is keyed or unkeyed that will determine whether your result is keyed or unkeyed um, so if we do the same thing, but instead of having an un unkeyed table on the left, we key it. You'll see we get the exact same data returned. The only difference being it's a keyed table. So the join will actually be performed in the exact same way, whether you have a keyed table or an unkeyed table on the left. Um, the only difference will be your result will either be keyed or unkeyed. Okay, um, so just note as well, you have to be very careful of common columns in your two tables. So for example, here um, in reference, if I had a third column called price for example um what would happen for any of those keys where there was a match um would be that the price would be overwritten with my value in the right hand side um so it's always a good idea to be as selective as possible on your right hand side table only pulling in the columns you know you need and if they have a same name so something like price or time time is a big one that people tend to join in and overwrite by accident um you might call it time from table to for example and rename it so that when you do your join you keep both time columns and don't override it by accident um so that's something to be careful of i think we might have an example here so i'm creating a third table or two and i've added in the price column here and if we perform our left join again you'll see price for those records where there's a match has now been overwritten and that might not have been intended behavior so just always double check on your right hand side table the column names don't match um, the left hand side other than the key um, if that's what you're intending to do and it also helps with performance if you're as selective as possible with your right hand side um, then you're only joining in the columns you need so it's going to be faster whereas if you just simply run a left join on an entire table when you only really wanted one of the columns that's going to be a lot slower so um, it has multiple benefits there OK, um, there's no right join as such in KDB. So, for example, if we wanted to do this join the other way around, um, let's see what would happen. 
So I'll do reference and then left join on trade. First of all, I'm going to get a type of error and that's because my trade table has not been keyed. So let's key it on sim. And then you'll see I've been able to join that in. And then just note as well, for reference, we had three results. We've got JP Morgan, IBM and GS. But the sim in the trade table, we had two results for JP Morgan. So you'll notice as well, um, the one that got joined on here is actually the first one. So um, make sure on your right hand side table, um, you know, if you want to join the first record for every key, that's fine. But if you don't, you may want to aggregate and group up that data at the key level. And remember, we can do things like sum price by sim, and then we'd only have one result for JP Morgan, um, for example, in the right hand side table. Um, so by default, it will join on the first one. So if you've got loads of rows here for JP Morgan, you're going to end up just joining the first one. And um, that can look a bit erroneous if it's a smaller value than the entire aggregated by value, for example. OK. So that's our left join in a nutshell. OK, so have a go at this exercise, creating a second reference table, reference one with these details. And then once you have that, um, join that with your trade and also the reference table to create a new table contain containing the RIC column. So we're going to be extending what we had above and adding on a third table. Okay, have a go with that and I shall see you in the next video.